Hey everyone, I'm Rod and Todd, a professional YouTuber who makes professional videos. And this is Hot Wheels Hall. Here's my hand. Yeah, I haven't done one of these in a long time. If you're new to the channel, basically this is a video where I open up a bunch of Hot Wheels. And I did get a bunch today. I went to Target and I found way more than I was expecting. Uh, found about 15, 14 Hot Wheels, I think. Yeah, 14, and I'm going to be opening them up, so in no particular order, here we go. Let's start things off with Surf's Up. He's part of the HW Daredevil series, number 4 out of 5. And I am going to complete the Daredevil series this year. I already have Poison Arrow, and I have another one of the Daredevils I'm going to open later. But here's Surf's Up. He is not an Olympics car anymore. He's in this weird aqua green turquoise color and the rider is red so anyway uh, surfs up fearless stunt vehicles ready for stunting action because he's in daredevil so now anyway, let's get this open come on don't you just hate it when that happens and then you tear through the whole thing to yeah yeah and it's got one of those little plastic trays in the back. There. There you go. Surf's up. Uh, you can remove the little writer. It says Hot Wheels on the back. Uh, so you can remove this guy. Here's just a better look at the vehicle without the rider. It's a surfboard on water. Uh... It says 68 on there, 489, but it's supposed to say 68. Uh, yeah, Hot Wheels loves putting the number 68 on their vehicles because Hot Wheels was started in 1968. So there you go, this is your fun fact of the day. No real printing on the water portion of things, but the board looks nice. And you can just roll it along with or without the rider. And actually, I found this car to be pretty fast if you're into downhill racing. And there we go, there's one of the Daredevils surfs up. Now I gotta clear all this garbage out here. Okay, moving on. There's the Jaguar XESV Project 8. It was released in the uh, HW Torque series, number one out of five. Uh, HW Torque is actually a brand new series. For 2021, it's another one I'm aiming to complete. Up there with Daredevils, Art Cars, X Racers, Glow Racers, Dino Riders, the Mattel Game series. Uh, there's there's a ton of series in 2021 I want to complete, and this is one of them. HW Torque, and apparently it's a uh, powerful vehicles designed to start fast and finish strong. Oh yeah, and before I open this, I should mention, they didn't actually change the designs of the cards this year. Because normally Hot Wheels cards have this little plastic piece right here. In order to prevent this from tearing. But I guess in order to be more eco-friendly, they now have this thin plastic coating on the back. You can see it reflecting. It's kind of like, like, have you ever had five-star notebook paper? It's basically the same principle. I don't really know which one I like more, the old style of car or this stuff, because this is actually pretty neat. But anyway, let's get this open. That was way more clean than the surfboard. No, what the? Something in the wheel. Is that just part of the car? Is it? Oh, it's a spare piece of paint. Well, that's weird. I guess it looks like the wheel is spinning pretty well. I actually do really like this model. I got it back in 2019 and it was first released and it's pretty cool. I don't really know why this is a part of HW Torque, but I guess it is a pretty powerful vehicle. So I think the main HW Torque, I just think muscle cars and this is not a muscle car. But whatever. Jaguar. Okay, uh, who's next? Let's get this one out of the way. Uh, Twin Mill. Everyone knows the Twin Mill, right? Everyone's favorite car but me. Uh, HW Dream Garage Series, number 3 out of 5. 
I actually didn't want to get this when it was first announced. I just knew they were making Twin Mill, and then the ID, uh, the uh, Hot Wheels ID version got leaked, and it's really cool blue color scheme. And I'm like, well, now I want to get the mainline version of that. So here he is. This is not the super rare ID one. This is just the regular 99 cent mainline release. But whatever. I don't care about Hot Wheels ID. I think it's stupid. You know, HW Dream Garage, the most epic Hot Wheels vehicles ever made, all together in one rockin' collection. I don't intend to complete this series. But there's only five releases this year? I thought there were ten. Weird. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, I don't have anything else to say about the packaging. Let's just rip them open. Okay, so. Except when I didn't, like, destroy it by knocking them over like that. Anyway, Twin Mill. I'm okay with Twin Mill. It's just that every Twin Mill I have is in really garbage shape because I played with them too much as a kid. So, here's my pristine Twin Mill that I plan on keeping in good condition. And I actually kind of dig it in blue. I normally like Twin Mills in green, but for what it is, this is pretty good. Plus, I do really like the design of this. I think it just looks awesome. Okay, uh, let's go with you. The 17 Lamborghini Urus. This is the second release of it. Uh, he was a new model last year, but here he is in 2021 in blue with the worst tires ever. I also just realized the yeah, Jaguar is the same tires, but those aren't, those don't have accents or anything. So this is, yeah, the Dimension I don't like this kind of tire. Like, these were everywhere in, like, the early to mid-2010s, but... So, but I, I didn't like them then, and I don't like them now, so... Yeah, 17 Lamborghini Uru, Sport of Factory Fresh, 4 out of 10. One of my favorite Hot Wheels series ever. I just really like... Just nice... Like, showroom-like cars. Anyway, Factory Fresh. Highly detailed, cutting-edge designs. Just get in the driver's seat and prepare to turn heads. So the gimmick with this uh, series is supposed to be like a, like it's supposed to make the cars look like they just rolled right off the assembly line, like something you'd see in the showroom. And it's awesome. And then let's rip open this Lamborghini SUV thing. Yes, there's a Lamborghini SUV. There he is. Got those awful looking tires, but whatever. Kind of dig the blue, it's the tires ruin it. Still a decent casting, but yeah, I just wish I went with different tires. It's cool. Okay, uh, let's go with you. Audacious. The classic Hot Wheels SUV, which for some reason keeps getting reissued. Anyway, part of Art Cars, 6 out of 10. I love the Art Cars. They always have amazing, bold graphics and stuff. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, colorful, art-inspired vehicles ready to paint the town. And the gimmick is that if you get all ten of them, each car has a letter on the top, and if you get all of them, they'll be able to spell something else. And with this year, it's, uh, I Heart HW or something like that. Last year was Art on Wheels. I didn't get the Treasure Hunt to spell S. I probably won't get the Treasure Hunt this year, uh... Which has the A on it, but at least they have another art car that's not part of a complete set that has the A on top. But, whatever. Let's just open up Audacious. Yeah. Can't say it's never been my favorite Hot Wheels casting, but it's just me or these tires look really tiny. Because, I, I don't know, do I have a spare Audacious lying around? Give me a second, I'm going to see if I can find one. Yeah, so I did some digging, and I found this green one. I never realized the tires and Audacious were so small until now. That's weird. This thing's really low to the ground, now that I think about it. Anyway, whatever. Let's just focus on this one. So on the side, it has, like, this tribal mask thing, like a face. It has the letter R on top. And a unifying feature among all the art cars this year, it says HW Art Cars in tiny text. The camera sucks, so you can't really see it, but... It's right there. So it says HW Art Cars, and I do really like it when series have the name of the series on the car. It just kind of 
keeps them unified like that. And it, it's cool. So anyway, I got some nice designs on it, and yeah, it's really all I'm gonna say. I never realized the tires are so small until now, though. Here's Tricera truck. I got this guy in late 2018 when he was a brand new model, and he immediately became super fast. Yeah, this guy's actually really fast. But here's Tricera truck as a part of Dino Riders, number 3 out of 5. It's one of those series that I never really labored to complete until now. Up until, or not up until I realized, oh, this is cool. Anyway, so, yeah, again, he's part of one of those series and never really bothered to want to complete, just like the Daredevils. And that's because when the Daredevils used to be really big, like they, they released these back in like 2017, 2018, whatever, and they had this really cool Daredevil logo on them that unified them all, and that's why I really wanted them this year. They don't have them on themselves this year. It sucks. Anyway, Dino Riders. Just generic dinosaur-themed vehicles. You got your T-Rex destroyer, the uh, Tricera truck here, Velociracer, uh, Motosaurus is the treasure hunt. Probably not going to be able to find that one, unfortunately. And Aeropod, who has a T-Rex on the side, and is marketed as the dino tracking vehicle. So anyway, it says on the back, uh, watch out, dinosaurs are on the loose, ready for a fun-filled adventure. Cool stuff. So I can just open it. Oh, there he is on his side. So yeah, it's just a purple triceratops on wheels. It is cool. I like it. They're really short, stubby horns. Oh, does he even have a third horn? I just realized that was let me let me get my other Tricera truck down here. There he is. Yeah, I guess you're right. The Triceratops truck only has two horns. Never realized that until now. Anyway, electric blue wheels, cool stuff. So that's Tricera truck. I really only got him because he was part of a series I wanted to complete. Yeah, uh, let's see, what else? Oh, yes. The Astana Hotto. Uh, released as part of the brand new series for 2021 HW Drift, number 3 out of 5, with the bright pink logo. And, uh,. This figure, or not, I say figure, so used to reviewing Transformers, this is weird. Uh, this car, uh, if you didn't know, it's part of the, uh, or it's from the Netflix original Fast and the Furious Spy Racers cartoon, which last year they released the I Am Motors Thresher and the Astana Hato in purple and white, respectively, as part of the main line as new models last year. I have both of those, but they also released those two vehicles Plus the Hyperfin and Rally Baja Crawler, or Baja Crusher, Baja Crawler, whatever it's called. Uh, as part of a special series, which each had moving functions, or moving features, that were supposed to be like pop-out weapons, a la Battle Force 5. And I got all of those. So I have the mainline release of Iron Motors Thresher, both of them, actually, or two of them, because I got one in a track set as well. The mainline release of Astana Hano. And then the all the moving features versions. So, in uh, this is based off the second season of the show, in which all four of the main cars were given brand new paint jobs, and they did release a second set of um, moving features cars based off of the second season, which is cool. And I got all four of those as well, and. They also released Hyperfin in the Season 2 colors as a new model this year, for some reason, as well as the Baja Crawler. So they're basically re-releasing all the moving parts guys without the moving parts as part of the mainline. So basically, compared to the mainline version of Astana Hato, this should be completely unchanged, apart from no moving features and transparent windshield, but who knows, let's open it up. Oh yeah, and also HW Drift, the vehicles that don't see corners as obstacles, but opportunities. 
There you go. Yeah. Yay, I love it when a car is shiny black like this. Fingerprints. Woohoo. But anyway, yeah. Bright gold tires. Gold headlights. Tampa wrap on there. We got some nice shiny reflective blue on the headlights here. It's basically like a fictional rally car. Or at least from what I can tell, it's supposed to be a rally car because it has those headlights in the front, but whatever. Big spoiler on the back or wing or whatever you call it. And then got these sculpted on the bottom. This is basically just the vestigial remains of the moving part. It would have this little feature that slid out of the side, but they gutted that for this release and just had these as non-moving features. It says uh, Astana Hato on the base. But anyway, yeah, it's great that we're getting this release as part of the main line and as part of the special series, because now I can have an excuse to own two of them. And yes, this is basically identical to the Astana Hato moving features one. In fact, I'm actually going to get it so I can compare. So anyway, let's play a guessing game. Which one is the one I just opened? It's this one. As you can see there, basically identical. The only difference being that the moving parts one has an opaque windshield, and this one has a transparent windshield. So you actually see the interior, which I like a lot more. And also, yeah, moving features. It just kind of slides out the side. It's weird. But anyway, yeah, they got the same tires, same paint jobs, everything. It is literally identical apart from the windshield. And I also got another Fast and Furious car, Ion Motors Thresher. I mentioned I got it in purple last year. Well, all the cars in Season 2 got brand new paint jobs. And this one is actually different from the Moving Parts one. Uh, but yeah, he's part of Rod Squad, number one out of five. It appears they're having a lot of the series this year, taking them from ten to five. Anyway, Rod Squad, be the leader of the pack with his fleet of custom hot rods. Yeah, it's just uh, helping them up here. So anyway, this one is actually different from the Moving Parts release by a lot. See, in the cartoon, it was this dark gunmetal gray color. But then, here's the moving parts toy. It's this weird, light gray, almost lavender color, and I don't like it very much. So, I'm glad that this is the screen accurate version. It does look pretty cool. Yeah, it's got the same tires, just in shiny paint instead of flat gray. And yeah, the paint job is drastically different, but this is the much, much more screen accurate version. I like it. Transparent windshield again. It's... It's really cool. And also it has this little feature on the bottom. See that there? Again, it's the vestigial remains. I need to stand up. Whatever. Of the uh, moving parts feature. It had this little switch on the bottom, which if you slide it forward, it has these little guns that pop out the front. Of course, this one doesn't have that, but whatever. It trades the cool guns for screen accurateness, which is obviously really cool. Okay, we got a bunch of new models, and that's really it. I guess we'll start with the least impressive, in my opinion. Gotta clear this up. This video is already almost 20 minutes long, jeez. Okay, new for 2021 is the Lancia or Lancia Delta Integral. Integral? I don't know. How do you pronounce that? Uh, for those of you who watch the YouTuber 3D Bot Maker, this car may be familiar because he decided to unveil the prototype for the for this car a few months ago in one of his videos. Hot Wheels had sent it to him or whatever. So he raced the unpainted prototype. So here is the finalized version. Uh, he's part of the Baja Blazers series. Number 6 out of 10, as you can see, it is apparently best for track. And, uh, let's see. And let's see, Baja Blazers, built for endurance and performance no matter what the terrain. Basically a bunch of rally cars, dirt bikes, and off-road trucks. I never complete this series. I, I don't like it. And it does have a description on the back. I'll probably raise the camera if that helps. There you go, now you can see it. So there's a description on the back. It says, born 1994, Maggiora, Italy. I'm probably butchering that, but sorry if any of you are Italian. And designed by Lancia or Lancia. 
The Lancia's eye-catching design and performance engineering, combined with its overwhelming dominance in the world of rally racing, raised its automotive status to legendary. I guess that's all they have to say about it. Yeah, this is basically just a rally car. I like rally cars. They're cool. I don't buy Hot Wheels rally cars very often, but whenever they produce them, I tend to like them. Or whenever I get them, I tend to like them. You know, I, uh, here he is in this white color. I got this little wing on the back. Number five. And, and something I noticed when I first saw him in the store, he has the Michelin logo on the side, complete with a picture of the Michelin man. Right there. And I got some nice paint apps on the front. That looks pretty good. Oh, and also mine has this weird, like, brown scuff mark on the side. You can't really see it very well, but it has this, like, brown scuff mark. Uh, is that supposed to be? Oh, nope. So I had this, like, brown stuff on the front, and I just wiped it off with my finger. I'm concerned now. <laughs> I don't know what that was, or, uh, why it was there, but whatever. It says Lancia Delta Integral on the base, so I don't have to forget it. Yay, new models. It's always great to find those. Shame I still can't find the uh, Barbie Dream Camper or Luke's Land Speeder. I haven't seen those at all this year. I mean, they've been out for months. Anyway, the 06 Pontiac GTO, new for 2021. And uh, he's also part of Factory Fresh. You can put him next to the Lamborghini or his, the uh, fellow new model, uh, the... Jaguar F-Type. In fact, I think they're making five factory fresh new models this year. Uh, this one, the Jaguar F-Type, and then I know it's a Mercedes 500E, I think that's what it's called, and a bunch of other stuff. But anyway, 06 Pontiac GTO. This is basically a modified GTO built for drag racing. And if you don't know, I'm a big fan of downhill Hot Wheels racing. That's just like the four lane, or six lane, it's just on a slope. Oh, Knock him down. It's like on a slope, it goes down. I call it downhill drag racing. So this car better be really fast for that if it's built for straightaways. Anyway, it says here, uh, I already read the description for Factory Fresh. I'm not doing that again. Anyway, it says here, he was born in 2006, Elizabeth, South Australia, designed by GM. The 1960s Pontiac Super Duty program offered race cars right off the assembly line. As a nod to that program, this What If GTO comes with an enlarged Ram Air hood scoop, exhaust header slash fender exhaust, drag slicks, parachute, wheelie bar, inside a roll bar, and no rear seats. Yeah, I examined this thing earlier. I don't see a roll bar sculpted in there. I don't know. I might not just be looking hard enough or whatever. No, it's super duty on this one. Yeah, let's just get this open and see if it... Rolls as well as it looks or whatever. I don't know. Seriously, this video is 23 minutes long. I still have four cars to go. I'm sorry, everyone. But anyway, Pontiac. It's basically a Pontiac GTO with a one of those little wheelie bars on the back so you can pop them up. And, but also, he's one of those cars that has front wheels in the back and thin wheels in the front. Be careful not to bend these. Uh, let's see if I can find that roll bar on the front. Yeah, I still don't really see anything. I don't know, it could just be a lighting or something, I don't know. Yeah, it says Super Duty on the side, right there. That's pretty cool. But I have no idea why this is a part of Factory Fresh. Because these are supposed to be, like, straight off the assembly line, or showroom quality models. And this is a drag racer. I'm not that I mind cars like this in that set, it just... Bizarre. Looks good though. Okay, uh. Yeah. Here's a fantasy model Head Gasket. It's called Head Gasket because it's got a helmet on the front. He was also released as part of the Daredevil set, number 2 out of 5. Uh, let's see. It says here he was born in 2021 in El Segundo, California, designed by Hot Wheels. Tighten your chin strap and get your head on straight because this brain burner of a hot rod is built to get ahead of the competition and blow your mind. Oh yeah, another thing I just realized, there's no code on the back of this to enter online. 
Because in all my other videos, I would have flipped this over and go, here's the code if you want it. But they don't have that anymore. Yeah. Again, again, really? Freaking mutilating these cards today. Like, normally I keep the Hot Wheels cards, but I throw away the blisters. But whenever this happens, it's just it's like, should I keep it? I don't know. It has so much crap on the back, it's just standing up. Anyway, head gasket. This is a unique little guy. Hoping he's fast. Gonna get the helmet looks kinda nice actually. It's like nice shiny reflective. Okay, you can do that. <laughs> Spoiler's huge. I don't know. He looks like he might be fast, but eh. Also, this guy's really lightweight. Like eighty percent plastic. This helmet is the only metal part on there. I don't really know what this has to do with stunt driving. Anyway, uh, two new models to go, and then one more car after that, and we're good. The uh, Porsche 935. For those of you Transformers fans, this is actually the car that Jazz turns into. Uh, it's in white, but it's not in the right paint job. Even though, it would be really cool if they were to produce this car uh, in G1 Jazz color. So that would be awesome. But anyway, I'm part of HW Race Day, 5 out of 10. Another series I don't care about. Anyway, uh, these speed demons prove any any day is a great day to hit the track. Born in 1976 in Stuttgart, Zuffenhausen, probably butchering that, in Germany. Designed by Porsche, or Porsche. Designed and engineered for racing. 935's twin turbocharged flat 6 engine with its mechanical fuel injection system was capable of generating up to 845 horsepower and its on-track performance made the 935 familiar sight in the winner's circle. This thing certainly feels heavy in the card. For all I know, we can't clear out this junk. Hm. This thing certainly feels pretty heavy in the card. Uh, who knows, it's gonna be really fast. Yeah, this thing is heavy. At least heavy for a modern Hot Wheels car. Like, it's not all metal or anything, but this thing actually does have some substantial weight to it. It's got the uh, Urban Outlaw logo on the roof. It says Porsche right there. Number 277 MW, whatever that means. And also, it's one of those cars that has a signature on the card, which means it was licensed by some famous race car driver or whatever. I don't know who any of those people are. I don't care. This is here. Magnus Walker. If you know who that is, let me know, because I certainly don't. But anyway, yeah, it's cool. The car that G1 Jazz turns into. Love it. Looks good, with or without the Jazz deco. Okay, man, that's actually really cool, though. So I'm just looking at it from this angle, and uh, I'm like, that is Jazz in my pockets. But anyway, that's the... Uh, Porsche 935 Turbo, Porsche 935 as it just says in the base. Okay, two more to go. It's 30 minutes long, geez. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. 21 Ford Bronco. Now, this is a car a lot of people were anticipating, or truck or whatever, because the Ford Bronco is an old truck. And last year, they're like, oh yeah, we're bringing the Ford Bronco back. And I didn't think they'd make a Hot Wheels car of it so soon, but hey, they're making a Hot Wheels car of the thing. Well, the uh, literal year it's released, you know, like in real life, that's cool. But to make it cooler, it's part of Then and Now, which is a series they used to do all the time, but now they don't so much anymore. Anyway, Then and Now, basically the main gimmick is they'll release two versions of a car. They'll release the old version, like a classic muscle car or whatever, and then they'll release the Now, which is like the modern version of that vehicle, and they'll both have the same exact paint job, so you can put them side by side. Which is cool. I can't say I've ever cared about completing the full set, but this basically means we're getting the custom Ford Bronco, which I really like. Even though it's the only other Ford Bronco they produce. Anyway, yeah, 2021 Ford Bronco. Uh, then and now, cars from the past and the present. Can you collect all five pairs? I'm probably not gonna. He was born in 2020 in Wayne, Michigan, designed by Ford. The Bronco is back. Ford's legendary and iconic SUV tips its hat to the past with its signature round headlights and clean, flat body sides. Monoding to the future with EcoBoost turbocharged engines and cutting-edge suspensions. It's ready, roaring, and able to take on the wild. Let's get this thing open. 
This guy, this guy looks like it might not fit in the track. Is he have functional suspension or whatever? No. Okay, this thing's cool. I'm hoping they'll be able to fit on the track now because he's kind of wide. What do we got? Now let's see. Does it say twenty? Yeah, it says twenty-one Ford Bronco. The large text on the on the uh, bottom. See there, it says Bronco on the uh, front grille on both sides. Got the uh, this gold logo there. Again, I'm a big Ford Bronco fan, but again, it's a new model, and if you're a huge fan of the Ford Bronco, go ahead and pick it up. Okay, last one. We finally made it to the end of this horribleness. Mattel Games, Roger Dodger. Uh, this is one of the cars released as a Super Treasure Hunt this year. This is not the Super version, unfortunately. This is just the regular release. But Mattel Games certainly is an innovative, at least for me, and I think it's really cool. It's a series they're doing. Uh, this is something you would definitely have seen in, like, 90s Hot Wheels. It would have made a series where the cars are all based off licensed properties. These are based off of games. So far, we've had the uh, 1932 Ford, like, uh, in Uno Deco, and then the Zombot in Rock'em Sock'em Deco, and they're also getting Pictionary and another one called Guster, which I don't know what that is. If you know what Guster is, please tell me. But here's Roger Dodger, number 2 out of 5 in Mattel Games, and as you can see, he's based off the Magic 8 Ball. I wouldn't really call it a game, but whatever. Anyway, yeah, when Hot Wheels teams up with Mattel Games, everyone's a winner. That's only Mattel Games, because Mattel also makes Hot Wheels. That's probably also why they were able to secure... But that's also why they were able to get a little license for the, all the Masters of the Universe stuff they're putting out. because it's owned by the same company. Okay, open her up. What's this? Oh yeah, it has this little graphic on the bottom. Or on the there. That doesn't mean it's a treasure hunt or anything. I didn't just accidentally open a treasure hunt. You probably already saw it. This is a really cool feature. Since it's a magic 8-ball, they tamp a graph to the triangle on the base. And it says, as I see it, yes. I could have sworn I saw a picture out there somewhere of it saying, uh, ask again later. So for all I know, there could be a bunch of different variants of it, but I'm not going to track that down. I mean, it's got, it says Magic 8-Ball there. can't really see it because his camera sucks. It's got the big 8-Ball on the side. It's really nice, shiny black. I'm, I love Roger Dodger. It's one of the classic Hot Wheels muscle cars. It's always great to see it get released. Especially in black, because then it can fit in with your World Race Scorchers cars. But anyway, there you go. It's all this junk. Yeah. Ford Bronco, Porsche, Stana Auto, Lancia, Head Gasket, uh, Iron Motors Thresher, Tricera Truck, and Twin Mill, and Audacious, the Pontiac, and the uh, Lamborghini, and the Jaguar, and Surf Sup. This was a mess. I'm sorry, everyone. I took up 33 minutes of all of our time. But, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking to the end. Uh, sorry this video was long. I didn't expect it to last this long. But yeah, thanks for sticking to the end. And, uh, yeah, please like, subscribe, notifications, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you later. This has been Rod and Todd signing off.